Hi, welcome to Promo Insiders, an ASA Media podcast covering the topics that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm Executive Editor Sarah Lavendusky, and today I'm joined by Jed Seaford, co-founder of print-on-demand company Stakes Manufacturing in East Lake, Ohio, and he's here with us today to discuss inclusive workplaces. So thank you, Jed, for joining the podcast. We really appreciate you being here today with us. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Wonderful. So tell us about your company, Stakes Manufacturing. What do you specialize in and what are your differentiators in this industry? Absolutely. So uh, we're one of the largest enterprise print-on-demand uh, apparel companies in the country. Uh, we produce apparel, bags, and headwear on demand. Um, our business is broken up into two different print methods. Uh, we use uh, state-of-the-art direct-to-garment equipment. We also use state-of-the-art direct-to-film equipment. Um, and then our business is really broken up into two parts as well, where half of our business is direct to co consumer e-commerce fulfillment. So uh, you go to Beatles.com, you buy a Beatles shirt, the order comes directly to us via an API, uh, and then we ship it directly to the end consumer white labeled as if we're Sony Music Group and the Beatles. Um, the other half of our business is quick turn, low minimum wholesale. Um, so turning around wholesale orders as low as 24 pieces and production turn times of, you know, four to five business days. So, um, you know, we work with, uh, we're really an only a B2B company. So we work with large aggregators. So we work with, uh, all the different sports leagues and record labels and entertainment companies. Um, also a lot of the online, uh, e-commerce platforms and retailers, uh, we've even positioned ourselves in Switzerland. Uh, so we actually produce for a lot of the print on demand providers as well. So, you know, folks that you might think would be our competition, you know, we're custom inks only outsourced digital printer in the U S and uh, we're printfuls only outsourced digital printer in the U S and soon to launch as Vista prints in a couple of weeks uh, in the U S and then um, we do a great deal of stuff in the promotional product space as well, working with, you know, Halo and Staples and American Solutions for Business and Vanguard. And, and really, it touches on both sides of our business. You know, the direct-to-consumer e-commerce fulfillment is really to help support all of the corporate stores um, and allowing them to sell more product without actually having to take any inventory risk or cost. Uh, associated with it. Um, so it enables people to generate more re net new revenue while, and offer products that they might not even normally sell uh, while also mitigating you know, how much inventory they have to have sitting around. Um, and then the other side is we support you know, distribution centers and events with our quick turn, uh, low minimum wholesale. Again, uh, enabling people to carry less inventory because they can replenish quicker and um, buy at smaller quantities. Great. So fast paced business, I would say. So oh, yeah. of your, of, you. <laughs> yeah, of course. So of your about 250 employees, an estimated, you would say 10% have some kind of disability. When did you commit to establishing an inclusive workplace? A uh, day one. So uh, uh, my brother has disabilities. He has fragile X, uh, which is the leading known genetic cause of autism. Mm -hmm. Um, about 23 years ago, he got a job working in the mailroom at the Securities and Exchange Commission as a mail clerk where he still works today. Mm -hmm. And it changed his life and it changed my family's life. It gave him financial independence, the ability to move out of my parents' house, purpose, happiness, work friends, the things that everybody deserves and most people take for granted. And uh, it also took a huge burden off of my family, you know, because we, you know, anybody who's got somebody in their family with disabilities, you spend a great deal of your life wondering what's going to happen after you pass, you know, so financial independence is one of the most valued things uh, it can be and, and, and it helps the community too, right? You go from somebody who's a dependent to somebody who's independent, taxpayer, pumping money into the local economy, public transportation, you know, the whole nine. So um, when we, when we, when we started Stakes Manufacturing, our first initiative was that we were going to create these type of opportunities um, that my brother got uh, for other individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities. And let me be very clear, this is not charity. This is not warm and fuzzies. We're talking about some of our best employees. So, you know, our top uh, warehouse employee at a 40 every month this year is a 22 year old gentleman with autism. Our top shipper at 35 uh, shippers is another gentleman with autism. And that's based off of speed and accuracy alone. Um, not even to mention that both of them have perfect attendance. So. We're talking about literally some of our best employees and, you know, I know we're going to get more into it, but, uh, you know, it also has an incredible impact 
on your non-disabled employees and your overall company culture. Um, and there's a tremendous ROI and benefit to it. So um, not only was our goal day one to kind of create those opportunities internally within our organization, uh, but also day one was we were going to be, you know, a case study and a proof concept to everybody in the print industry and the promotional product industry about this viable model um, because, you know, everybody's complaining about the inability to hire people and all the challenges currently. But the reality is there's a, there's this untapped resource, this community of people that have an 80% unemployment rate. And that's not because they don't want to go to work and it's not because they can't. Um, so we're helping sort of enlighten people on uh, the support services that they can get that are at no cost to them so that they can replicate that model. Because to be quite frank, um, you know, we talk about inclusion. A lot of people think race, religion, sexual orientation, age, but disabilities usually gets left out in the dark. And if you look at the um, you look at the uh, uh, print space as well as the promotional product space, a bit behind the times when it comes to inclusion in general, especially when you start talking about inclusion um, with disabilities. So uh, we're hoping that we can really work to create an industry-wide impact and, and change there. And, you know, we've helped a lot of um, folks in the print industry set up programs at their organizations like Corn Eat and m and and, 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 and Rock and some of the biggest names in the industry. And now uh, we're really trying to do the same thing in the promotional space. You know, I recently helped uh, connect Halo with a local disability employment service provider so they can get a program set up. So that's why I'm here too, talking to you, right? It's, we're trying to really... Um, get the word out and, and see how we can support people um, joining us in our mission for disability inclusion across the industry. Yeah, it's interesting that you're saying, you know, the industry tends to be behind the eight ball, because my next question for you is, it seems like, you know, there are reasons why this industry in particular, print, production, apparel, promotional products, would be well suited for this group of individuals. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I do a lot of work on disability inclusion outside of our business as well. I sit on the board of directors for the National Fragile X Foundation. I also sit on the board of directors for SEEK, which is an organization in the D.C. area that supports about 400 individuals with uh, disabilities to have independent living and, and, and employment. And we work with large companies like CVS and Walgreens and National Institute of Health and Embassy Suites and Hilton. Um and I was always kind of taken aback that, you know, we didn't work with any printers because, you know, folks with disabilities um, learn and flourish with repetition. So, um, you know, when I look in my facility as a printer, as well as a pseudo 3PL as well, you know, everything's repetition. Like 99% of what's going on on the floor is repetition. And where you see repetition, that's also tends to be where you have the highest turnover rates for non-disabled employees. Right. Um, but it's where people with disabilities find it at home. That routine is really a beautiful thing. I think all too often people look at it, and they go, oh, well, it's got to be low skilled repetition. Like, hey, this is going to be somebody sweeping the floors or picking up boxes. But the reality is there's a whole spectrum of disabilities and, 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 and we're looking at high skilled repetition as well. Right. You know, for example, I helped the screen printer set up a program. They thought the person was going to come in and be cleaning screens. But after they talked to the disability employment service provider, it was actually a data entry position within their organization that was the best fitted for the candidates that were available. Um, because again, with disabilities, we always look at the disability, but what we should be looking at is the ability, right? So we talked about a couple of the gentlemen with autism in our facility. You know, folks with autism, while there might be some uncomfort in social situations, right? Um, it changes from different people to different people, right? But people with autism also have a superpower where they're some of the most detail-oriented people on the planet, right? So, you know, our job as managers, leaders, owners um, is really to cultivate people's strengths and abilities, not focus on, yeah, and mitigate their weaknesses and disabilities. So, you know, going back to your original question, you know, we saw this big gap in the industry that like, all right, well, everything does make sense in our shipping department, our pressing department, our printing department, quality control, um, pretty much every department within our building. Um, so it, it really is a perfect fit. And what we've also seen, and I talked about sort of the turnover rate with repetition, they're some of our longest tenured employees. Um, they, so you, you're 
you have a position that maybe you're hiring for that turns over every nine months. Well, now you get somebody, maybe it takes you an extra two days to train them because you're tailoring it or maybe doing a little extra training. But if that person is going to stay with you for years and perform as a top performer within your organization, regardless of their disability, you know, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Right. Um, so I think the print industry and the promotional product industry are kind of perfectly suited for this. Um, we see a ton of 3PLs across the country that are doing it. Um, so it's it's already a proven concept there. And uh, we've already seen so many print uh, organizations that have opened programs and started. So we're trying to get the same momentum we've got in the print industry, more specifically in the promotional industry. And I think we're, we're just starting to put the, push that snowball down a hill. Mm-hmm. And we talked about, you know, the, the benefits um to the, you know like you mentioned um try in this really tough labor market trying to find those who you know less turnover would be nice um you know for some of those those jobs that you said are well suited for these individuals how does um having an inclusive workplace how does it benefit um not just the employer but also the employees and like you had mentioned the employees families i mean there's something to be said for like you you had mentioned you know there's something to be said for the 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 child your child who you were fearing would be dependent and what do you do when you're gone as a parent that they have like this independence now that they maybe didn't think they would ever have like how what is kind of like the overarching benefit to all of the parties involved uh, yeah so let me decouple that i'll start with the company level right so from a company level if you're not hiring with people with disabilities, plain and simple, you're not hiring the best employees because there's a huge population uh, that, that is open to, to come work. And again, you're going to find some of your best employees from that and some of your most dedicated employees, some of your most upbeat and most grateful employees that come to work excited to work, not dreading it. They come to work smiling. Um, and that's contagious, right? That doesn't just impact them. So what you're going to see is, you know, not only are you kind of providing these opportunities for the folks with disabilities? But what you're doing for your company is you're improving company culture, you're improving retention. We've got folks that don't have disabilities who keep working with us because, hey, I could go make a dollar more at Amazon around the corner, but when I come to work here, I actually feel like I'm making an impact and changing people's lives. You know, and outside of being a doctor and EMT, like how many people go to work and feel like they're changing anybody's life, right? So if you can add more value to, you know, what people get out of their job and their own fulfillment and enrichment, um, that's a beautiful thing. And I think, you know, so we've also seen it creates more empathy and teamwork. So, you know, we're not the biggest organization, we're relatively, you know, we're a nice size medium organization, but this has kind of shrunken us down and made it still like even with 250 people makes it feel more like a a family atmosphere, right? Because everybody's there to support each other and not just supporting the folks that have disabilities. I mean, just we've seen cross-departmental teamwork that just didn't exist before because you've created that environment. Um, You know, I think it also creates a more welcoming environment for all of your other employees. One of the most touching things that I've seen is, you know, doing either training sessions or town halls with the company and having employees come out with, hey, I have disabilities. I've never told another employer before because I thought I'd be judged or lose my job, but you've created this safe atmosphere and environment where I can feel fine saying, hey, I've got such and such or or, or I'm dealing with such and such. So, you know, it creates that much safer, more welcoming environment. Uh, You know, and we all, we talk about accommodations and sometimes I think that's a big worry people have. It's like, oh, if I get to someone with disabilities, I'm gonna have to stall ramps, I'm going to have to do all these things, it's going to cost. The reality is 90% of accommodations don't cost the company anything. And accommodations really tend to be like, hey, let's tailor the way we train, right? So like a lot of our training material was just text. So we had to make some of it more visual because some of the folks with disabilities we were hiring weren't the best readers. Uh, But the reality was what we learned from it is that we should have been tailoring our training for everybody. Because even if you don't have disabilities, Some people learn from hearing, some people learn from seeing, some people learn from talking, some people learn from doing, right? So you have to know those things. So we've created an atmosphere where now we can also not just tailor our training for the folks with disabilities, but we're also tailoring our training better for other folks. Safety too, right? So um, we have heat, we have 50 dual heat presses that are 300 degrees that we're doing our DTF transfers with. Well, we go, okay, well, if we're going to have folks with disabilities working on these, what are the precautions we need to make to make sure that Nobody's burning themselves. After we did this audit, what we came to find out was 
we should have done these safety precautions for every employee that we had. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's helped us level up as an organization. Um, I already mentioned sort of the KPIs, right? Some of our top performers based off speed and accuracy have disabilities and other people are performing better because if you're getting your butts kicked in performance metrics by somebody who is, are, is dealing with other challenges, yep. it's highly motivating, right? Uh, we also have folks who go, hey, you know what? I'm having a crappy day. I'm going to go talk to such and such because every time I talk to them, it cheers me up because they're so grateful. They're so happy, right? They're also some of our most trusted employees, best attendance rates of any employees that we have, yep. period. Yep. Um, so that's sort of the beginning of the company impact. And it also teaches our other employees empathy and exposure because a lot of people just haven't been exposed to people with disabilities. And that's where their preconceived notions have come up of like, you know, oh, does this mean that I'm going to have to carry their weight in, in what we do because, you know, I don't have disabilities. But now, you know, folks are realizing, no, <laughs> those are actually the people that are easiest in the organization for us to deal with. Um, you know, and and again, if it gives them fulfillment and, and you touched on the family thing, it's the same thing that impacted my family. Like, yep. you know, we've had family members come into our facility and be like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe that's my kid. Like, I've never seen him so responsible, so attentive, so on task, you know, because oftentimes why we can't blame everybody else for having preconceived notions and stigmas about people with disabilities, oftentimes the families are also putting their, the, you know, their children in a box of, hey, you know, well, I don't think he can do that, or I don't think she can do that. And the reality is, in history, people always say people can't do things, and then they do them. Right. So um, even my brother, like he's a Special Olympic downhill skier. If you had asked me wow. 20 years ago, I would have told you he'd never downhill ski in his life because, you know, he doesn't necessarily have the best hand eye foot eye coordination. But again, uh, don't put people in a box and, uh, you know, don't kind of pigeonhole them into, you know, thinking what they can accomplish and, and what they can bring to the organization. And again, don't hire people with disabilities just to feel good about yourself. You got to hold them to standards just like you hold every other employee. You have same expectations. Um, and I think we'll talk a bit more about the support services out there that will really help you in that mission to getting on board. Because I think the other big kind of factor of why people don't do this is because they think they're either, hey, we're a for-profit business. We're going to lose money or we don't have any managers. We're ill-equipped. We've never been exposed. We don't know how to deal with it. Um but there's free services out there that can solve all of that, which uh, I don't know if you want to jump into that now or we get to that later questions. But. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I wanted to conclude by just asking, you know, OK, those who are listening are saying, like, I feel kind of called to this. Like, I feel like we could do this, but I'm not sure where to start. And I think, you know, there's maybe some like you're saying, there's some misconceptions about what this would entail. Like for somebody who's listening, who's saying, you know, I would like to explore this. What, what would be their first steps? And again, what are some misconceptions that you kind of want to address? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is, I think the number one reason people don't do it is because of the resources, right? They think it's going to soak up resources. I run a for-profit business, and no matter how passionate I'm about this, I wasn't going to do something that was going to put our business at financial risk, right? Um, even the first apartment that we, we we set up in was the warehouse, and I said to the manager, hey, if at any point you can't hit your numbers because of this, you got to let me know. I know you know this is my passion, but like, and my business partner has been like a brother to me and my brother since I was five years old. So it's his passion too, you know, but we need to know, right? I came back to him a month later. was like, Hey, how's it going? And he's like, well, it's going great. And I go, well, no, seriously, is it, is it making it harder for you to hit your numbers? He goes, no, these are, these are some of our most reliable, trusted employees. And by the way, a month ago, I used to come to work and I was just moving boxes of cotton around a warehouse. Now I come to work and I feel like I'm changing people's lives. I've never had that fulfillment before, right? So, um, but I've also spoken with organizations that have tried to hire people with disabilities and they went, oh, well, it didn't work. And I'm like, well, why didn't it work? Well, we hired somebody that didn't work. All right, well, first question is, just because the first person doesn't work, you know, so what, right? If if the first you know, woman you hire doesn't work, you're never gonna hire a woman again, right? Like, like it, you can't, you can't, can't kind of generalize one person, right? <laughs> But the other reason that it didn't work is because they weren't they weren't leveraging disability employment service providers. And I do speaking engagements all over the country because I think that's the biggest gap right now. I think people are unaware that there are these disability employment service providers all over the country that will help you find, screen, interview, 
onboard, train disabled employees. They'll also even train their managers on how to work with them at zero cost to the employer. Wow. So you're getting a free hiring agency, you're getting a free training agency, and then they'll provide you continued support. So they'll pro either have on-site job coaches or depending on sort of the needs of the individual, um, you always have a job coach that you can call and be like, hey, well, I have this situation, how would you handle it? And in some of those cases, it might be little situations. Like we had one of our best employees was turning around signs during their breaks because it was like a nervous tick. The manager's like, well, what do I do? I was like, well, call their job coach. Call their job coach. The job coach talks to the individual. The job coach also calls the parents to help kind of reiterate at home. As an employer, I'm never going to call the parents. That's not my job. It's not what we do, right? Um, so these service providers are all over the country and they'll help you find the right, the right people. Um, and, and the way they work too, is you don't have to like go, oh, well, this is the job I have, right? We talked earlier about like the screen printer who thought it was going to be a, a, a screen cleaner, but it was actually data entry, right? So what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll audit your business. They'll under, not audits, maybe a, 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 sounds like a more grand word than it is. They'll just come in and they'll look at all of your entry level positions, to figure out what is going to be the best fit. And it's going to be the best fit based off the individuals that they have available to them and also based off of your needs, right? And then they'll help you kind of hire for those individual positions that you have open, right? And they'll work directly with your managers to help train them. Um, there's also incredible services out there. The, there's a vocational rehabilitation office in every state, all right? And part of their job is to help folks with disabilities find employment. The other part of their job is working with organizations that are inclusive and providing them free services. Like we just had a, we had a, an etiquette training where the folks came in and we had 60 folks get trained for free at our facility. And it was a beautiful thing because I just broke down all these barriers that people had and made people more comfortable. Also just inspired folks. I mean, you know, one of the activities was like, Hey, let's look at all these jobs and, and all these disabilities and what's the disability that can't do this job. And the number one answer was a blind person and a, to be a forklift driver. Well, it turns out they've had a forklift driver that they've got certified who's legally blind because he can only see, you know, literally directly in front of them with zero peripheral, but they outfitted the, you know, the forklift uh, with extra mirrors, kind of like your rear view mirror in your car. Mm -hmm. And he was able to get certified. Right. And wow. all of a sudden, you know, you're like, people's minds are blown going, oh my God, we put everybody into a box. You know, we've got, we've got an employee who started working with us folding t-shirts who turns out, I found out week two that she's got a degree in cybersecurity. She's going back for a master's in a minute. Uh, and, and she was just doing it because nobody would give her a chance or hire her. Right. So, um, so you get in touch with a local disability employment service provider who will help you so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to figure it out yourself. They'll help you find the right employee. And it's not a good fit. You tell them and they'll replace that person with someone who's a better fit, right? Because again, we're running for-profit businesses and you have to get good employees that you can hold accountable. Um, and they'll help you with the training too and how to tailor that. So um, there's an organization called uh, The Net, which is sort of an aggregator of the, vote, the VRs across the country. Um, you can find them on a uh, website, uh, csavr.org. Um, that's a great place to start or just reach out directly to your local vocational rehabilitation office. You can Google disability employment service providers locally. Um, APSE, which is APSE.org. They're the national trade organization for all the disability employment service providers. Um, Stakes was actually honored last year. We won their national employer of the year as oh, voted by the service providers. So that was, that was a pretty awesome accomplishment for us, something that we're really proud of. But APSI will also can help kind of direct you to somebody. Um, another great organization is called the ARC, um, and that's the ARC.org. Um, and they also champion different services for folks with disabilities, and they have chapters in every area. Some of them provide job services. If they don't, they can refer you to other folks who can. And, and my name's Jed Seifert, and it's Stakes Manufacturing. You can also find me on LinkedIn, and I'd be more than happy to connect you because that's where I get my warm and fuzzies is helping connect other folks, you know, to, to get programs set up and helping them kind of break down these stigmas and preconceived notions about where they can't do it. And again, you can also, I say, start small, start with one employee. There is also a tremendous amount of the disabled population because of archaic uh, federal policies 
um, are actually hindered from working too many hours or they lose their fed federal medical benefits. Mm. So there's a huge population of disabled employees who can only work part-time because they don't want to lose their benefits. So yeah. you might even only have a part-time opening. So even if you don't have an opening, my suggestion is, is you reach out to one of these organizations, start the conversation. Think of them no different as any other hiring organization that you work with, except for the fact that they're not going to cost you 30% or any crazy fee. They're literally free service for you. Um, and, and pick the right manager and right department to start, you know, so that you're, you know, and be transparent with your organization, you know, because they'll respect you for it. And it will just be more that more seamless. Like, hey, you know what? We want to be a more inclusive organization. So we're going to try to hire some folks with disabilities. And I think what you'll see is, uh, it's going to improve your retention with your non-disabled employees as well and, and improve their sort of employee satisfaction of knowing, hey, I'm not just working for somebody who's moving stuff around a warehouse. I'm working with somebody who's committed to, you know, making a difference and impact, you know, people's lives. Great. Well said. Well, thanks, Jed. Appreciate your time today. And for more Workplace Insights, please head to asicentral.com slash news. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jed. Being.